let, let me see if I could if if I can understand this uh, without mentioning the company. Uh, so you you lost your job with said company. You got into an accident up in up in New York. What was the accident? Okay, so um, the accident was uh, it was involving a set of guardrails that was on like a turn that was only meant for cars. Uh, the day that this happened was the same day that President Joe Biden was visiting. So all the exits that uh, you know, all the places that I usually would take, they were being closed off due to a whole bunch of you know, I guess due to his you know arrival there. Um, but. I can tell you the story and make it short. I was taking a load from uh, Foxborough, Massachusetts to Alcola, Tennessee, right? And as I'm going down there, my GPS is rerouting me. I'm using Copilot GPS, by the way. And my GPS just keeps rerouting me, keeps rerouting me, right? And I keep going to like, uh, as I'm going through like midway through Connecticut, I'm starting to see police off. Um. <clears throat> So my GPS just keeps rerouting me, keeps rerouting me. So I keep taking the reroutes. Now what I should have did was I should have went through workflow and I should have just re like reassigned it through workflow so that it could keep it as a truck route. Because if you keep you know clicking the retakes, it'll eventually start giving you car routes. Right. So I kept accepting the retakes, and what would happen was like the time would go down uh, initially. But I guess once it took into play <clears throat> everything that was going on around it, the time would just go back up. And like I said, at the time I didn't know Joe Biden was visiting until after, you know, after the, you know, what happened with the uh with the state troopers. But I'm going through and I'm eventually after going through a whole bunch of towns and cities and getting nowhere, I end up in White Plains, New York, I'm on the freeway. And before I even get to exit six it's getting to the point to where the GPS is wanting me to ride the exits alongside the traffic that has slowed down. Right. So I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm figuring this out because it keeps having me ride along the exit. So I'm like, Hey, I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? So I get the exit six and, and the only way to get back on, it was literally like a pillar of concrete from the entrance to the exit. Like they was right beside each other. And I'm not from New York. I'm from South Carolina. So uh, I say, okay, you know, this isn't going to work. So I take that left. And then I take, I get my second left lane to take that next left. I take that next left. They want me to get, my GPS wants me to get back in my left lane and get back on the interstate, but I would be heading the other way. So I told myself, hey, I don't want to go backwards, right? So I'm, I keep going down, right? I'm going down. I'm headed into the city of right, uh, White Plains, New York, which is next to the Bronx. So as you know, driving in the boroughs for, you know, especially a driver, you know, that's only been doing this for about 10 months and never driven through the city of New York. Like everything I've been through, even if I had to go to the Northeast, it was, you know, it was pretty comfortable for the most part. So I'm encountering a whole lot of tighter turns, you know, lower bridges than normal, having, you know, having the state troopers that are on, you know, site, they're having to turn me around or having to have people like back up so I could turn around out of that area. So I'm getting frustrated at this point. I say, okay. I say, uh, I say, as soon as I get back on the interstate this time, I'm gonna let my company know, Hey, this is it. Cause I tried to get through as much as I can to get this load through. But I, you know, uh, it's not working. You know, I might have to rest until I figure out what's going on or until I figure out, you know, until the traffic calms down. So as I'm going through, I see this one turn in the city of White Plains, New York. It, it, to me, it's two lefts and a right, and that right is going downhill. But I know that if I complete this turn, it's a straightaway underneath a bridge. It's uh, 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 the the uh, interstate is right there. I can get on the interstate and then I could just flow with the traffic going down the interstate, tell my people what's going on, show them the, you know, the routes that I basically tried to take to get out of this, but couldn't get out of it and just tell them, hey, I got the, you know, I got the rest for, you know, until, you know, this slows down. So I approach the turn, I'm taking, 
that first left, and mind you, it's New York, so the streets are tight. So I'm taking my first left, you know, and I'm going up as far as I can to that left, keeping my tandems away from the people that's on the that's on to the left of me. Statue of Liberty and Spider-Man's cultists continue to contend that the vile vigilante is a hero. Well, if he were a hero, he'd unmask himself and tell us who he really is, because only a coward conceals his identity. Okay, so um, I'm taking that left. Trying to take it as wide as I can, take that second left, because it's basically like a turn, then another turn, then it goes downhill. So I'm taking both of those lefts as wide as I can, keeping my my tandems away from the cars to the other side of me. As I start to swing to go downhill to the right, which this right was is right next to a mall, as a set of guardrails that are going down the curve of this right of this right lane. And as I'm going down, I can't. I can't make my truck go to the left side, like to the left to avoid my tandems hitting the guardrails because there's cars on that other side. So it's a slim lane. You got guardrails going down. I'm trying my best to wiggle as much as I can away from it, but it's not working. I just start, I took the guardrails out, right? So I'm like, man, I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. I have been trying to avoid things for an hour and a half, two hours, it seems like, you know, just in the city of New York alone, or not the city of New York, but in the state of New York alone is having me do all this stuff. But White Plains, I guess, is where the accident happened. So the first thing I try to do is I try to contact my company. I let them know what's, try to let them know what was going on. And I'm trying to get the police involved as well, you know, um, because at first I was trying to sit there, whatever, get a lot of honks and beeps, right? So ahead of me, just straight ahead of me, I see policemen underneath a bridge. It's like policemen on the other side of a bridge, and it's a straight shot, no turns. So I told myself, hey, if I could get to where these cops are, let them know what happened. I give them my information and everything like that. They call my, they call my company. Cause I've been in like maybe one accident before, not as bad as this one. Not, not, it wasn't even that bad. It was whenever I first got started, I backed up into a truck accidentally on the road, you know, but I'm a, uh, you know, to, you know, so at this point, you know, I'm like, Hey, let me call my company. Let me figure it out. I'm trying to call my company. My company has about five or six people ahead of me. And as soon as I go to call the police, I see the people underneath the bridge. So. I'm making my way to try and stop either to stop in front of them because the white line where they was at, it began with them being where they were at because it was a turn before it went underneath that bridge. Right. So in my head, I, I'm from South Carolina. I don't know where anything else is at, but I know as I'm going to them, I see on the other side of this bridge, that's the interstate right there. The interstate is right there. So if I don't stop right here, I, that's me That's me fleeing the scene right there. So I try my best to stop uh, to stop in front of them, right? Because there's enough space in front of them to stop. All of a sudden, right, as I'm, as I'm attempting to stop, right, my, uh, I didn't know it at the time, right? But because I went through those guardrails and I hit those guardrails on my right side, it it bent back like it's a part of your tunnels that's cocked like a, this shaped like a pistol, so it cocked that whole thing back. And because it did it, it made the front part of my tunnels like the front axle. It twisted it to the right. I didn't know it at the time. So as as I'm as I'm approaching and I'm trying to pull over to my right, it's like instead of like my trailer following like behind me how it would usually if I'm pulling over to the side it kind of bent at an angle. So it went into the state troopers that was on that side. Right. And it, it didn't like, like through like destroy their car, but it left like a scratch. Like it was a scratch that started downward and going, and it went up and it disappeared. So it was like a slight scratch. So I pull over to the side and I saw it out of, like I said, out of the corner of my, uh, my mirror. And, uh, you know, the police officers, they're, you know, they're bewildered as they should be, state troopers. They're bewildered as they should be. They say, hey, what's going on? Da, 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 da. 
you know, the first thing they do, they look at my car, they say, man, you, you know, they look at my trailer, they say, man, this is total. You're going to have to get a tow. But first, let's get your information. I give them my information. We we go through whatever we go through. I had to speak with a couple of state troopers telling them what happened, right? And even when I had to give a statement to, then I had to have a, 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 um, I had to have a guy from the actual city of White Plains police officer. He showed up. He did my level three inspection. Basically, was checking my lights. Basically, was checking everything to make sure it worked or whatever. Which you know. Um, after all this goes down, I'm being polite. I'm handing them all my information, right? And I'm doing everything, you know, you know, and I'm getting my company involved, letting my, co you know, everything is, is going. I get three citations, right? And the three citations are for, uh, one was failure due care for like a vehicle. It was like for a vehicle stopped and standing. It was one for, uh, for, uh, uh, uh for, uh, property damage leaving the scene, which that wasn't right. And one for uh, move from lane unsafely. Those were the three that I had got. And so, uh, um, whenever I finished with everything, they got the they, they got the tow people, and the tow people took me down 124, and they sat me to the side, and they actually showed me what happened due to what happened with the guardrails. So it bent my uh, it bent my uh, 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 front part of my axles, and right, and it made it swing instead of just going how it would usually go so you know I, uh so the following days happen i get i first get my truck towed to a place up in north white plains at an exxon station i guess where they work at where they work on cars and trucks and they couldn't fix it right they ended up having my uh the front part of my axles uh chained up so that i could move a short distance to get the load that I had on there offloaded, right? So they called another towing, they called another towing place to come get my truck. The company did, because I'm not allowed to drive at this point. They, they said, hey, you're suspended until your drug results come back. I had a drug test done that night, the night of the uh, accident. So I, uh, they have another towing place come and tow the truck to a place out there in the Bronx. A uh, 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 crown towing, right? And then we're out there in the Bronx, and you know I'm sitting there getting everything together, uh, 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 because I know what's about to happen. I done not necessarily with CDLs, but I done been in this situation before with like a company, and 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 you know, and we were mining, and the same thing happened. It was like an accident. Safety reviews it. I get my drug test done, and even though it's gonna come back that, you know. I was clean. They still gonna let me go, do the whatever. So, I uh, I just wait for it, you know. So, the company says, "Hey, we gave you some money. Uh, uh, uh time to take you home. You know, you you need to find your way home, right?" So I leave my truck up there because they tell me to, and I uh I get I ordered the Uber to Chinatown, and then after that, I got the China bus, and then I came back home. So now. What my situation is, right, is that um, I'm at home. I know that the accident, I like, the accident in terms of, like, what happened, like, yeah, but in terms of the charges, I know that I'm not guilty, right? And I know that I can still drive. It's just, hey, that day, that day President Joe Biden was in town, so me just usually going through the interstate just wasn't about to work because they had everything closed off. It wasn't nothing I could do. So I'm sitting here going through cities and towns instead of just going through the highways that I usually would go through. Like I wouldn't have needed to go through a town in New York if I'm going through the interstate to get to Tennessee, if this makes sense. First, I want to apologize for what happened to you. You, you being the new driver, you driving in areas you're not familiar with, things happen. That's what happened with new drivers. You're a rookie. You, you know, it, shit happens. All right. Uh, companies, you know that 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 are starter companies should know that. Like, you know, stuff happens. You know, you get into a situation, you explain it to them, and again, stuff happens. 
Well, I like to say at first is using the mobile GPS is not the thing to go. <laughs> Everybody would tell you that. Everybody would 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 be they 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 will be blessed by the by the mobile GPS, uh, Google Maps, Waves, uh, uh, Copilot. But see, the problem with mobile GPS, they are not uh, uh, stable. They're not um, they're not one hundred. You know. Unfortunately, you got into right. a situ you got into a situation where all of the interstates was closed down because of the president. But there was nowhere. Uh, was there any like like detours like like when they when they route you off the highway, especially in a situation like that, they would usually have like detours that would have you to go, especially for a truck. You know, to go around to right. maybe a to maybe a route or something like that. There, there wasn't there there wasn't none that particular day. Well, yeah, like once I got like into the city of New York, no, nah, it wasn't none. Like it was basically just routes that was trying to get me off on of the interstate and get me back onto the interstate. Like I was literally riding the side of it. Now. I, before, like whenever I was in, because it started when I was in Connecticut, like they was trying to get me to reroute. Like I said, I didn't understand what was going on at the time, but I did see, because, well, the Copilot GPS app, it wasn't necessarily on my phone. Like they, they gave it to us through the tablets. Like that was the GPS that they had us use it through like the little tablet that it's, the, the it's, company issues out to their it's, drivers. It's still a mobile. And uh, it, it, it's still a mobile. Yeah, yeah, it's still a GPS. mobile. Yeah, you're right. Um, you're so, right. yeah, um, what what you should do, you know, uh, next time, I I would always suggest if you want a GPS, get a truck specific GPS, and that's either a Garmin or a Ram and Natalie because. For two reasons. Number one, if the data goes out on the on, on the mobile on the mobile GPS, you're screwed because you it's going to keep rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. Every time you lose data, it's going to reroute. Every time you turn, it's going to reroute. Every time you go in a different area, it's going to reroute. So if you don't have the data, again, it's going to reroute. With a truck specific GPS, i.e. Garmin or 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 uh Ram and Nally, it, it 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 will pretty much keep you steady. Now, again, GPS is our tools. So, you know, sometimes the Ram and Nally and the Garmin could have their little issues too. But nine times out of ten, you know. The, those two particular GPS would keep you steady, and I would tend to hold them more over than any mobile or company GPS that 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 is given to me. Um, so get yeah, for f going into the future, yeah, try try to invest in one of those, and I was and I will probably say go and get it off of Amazon because if you go to one of these trust stops, they'll try to they'll they'll try to gouge you. They'll try to gouge you. Um all right, so Gotcha. Yeah, you said so Gar you said Garmin because I'm I'm writing it down. So Garmin, Garmin or Ram McNally. Or Garmin or Ram McNally. Um right gotcha. now right now I'm rocking I had a Ram McNally. Uh the I'm not sure how the how they are now because the ones that I the first one I had was awesome. It lasts for about five years. The second one that I got only lasts for a hot minute. And then the Garmin that I got right now, you know, I had for about two years so far. So uh but either or either or you know is it's pretty much preference you know you you might want to try the garmin first and say hey i might not like the garmin and then get you a ram and nally you might like the ram and nally so it's it's pretty much a personal preference all right so you came off the highway 
uh, you pretty much tore up the guardrail. The guardrail pretty much tore up the tore up the tandems of the truck. Um, maybe you know, maybe pull off to the side right there, and you know, probably could have just walked down there since you saw the saw the cops. Maybe, um, but you know, you decided again. You're a rookie. You know, you you decided to go down there and and try to do everything right. You know, unfortunately, you know, one thing led to another, <laughs> you know, being with the car and everything. Um, I, I guess my thing is, uh, you know, when you got down there to talk to the cops and everything, of course, uh, you said they, they, they gave you a drug test right there on the scene. Well, well, no, no. Uh, uh, they, uh, the only thing that happened was they gave me the inspection. It was like later on that night. They had uh, my company had had a mobile unit come out. It was a guy that drove up in a Honda CRZ, and he had like um, yeah, he had the um, and I guess the companies do it just to be like, hey, we we gave it every out before we said, hey, let's get rid of. Them. That's what I'm thinking it is. Hi, um, my name is Peter Parker, and I. like a coffee please okay no problem peter parker so you 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 got terminated uh by said company and you got did they give you a specific reason to why you was terminated i mean i have an no. idea but did they did they give you a reason why you was terminated no, they just said uh, that or they they just said was hey uh, go home, you know basically they wanted me to go home where they was trying to figure out the results of my drug test and they was trying to analyze everything as safety team for the safety team. So I had went home by that next Tuesday I get a call hey your drug test came back clean. Um, me and the the safety team we sat back we analyzed the situation. And due to, you know, due to whatever, I, I'm sorry to, you know, let you know, but you have been terminated immediately. Um, uh, 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 then, uh, you know, they asked me, uh, 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 was there anything else that I wanted to say before I left? So I told them, I said, hey, yeah, you know, your GPS is like, you know, all the GPS is, you know, y'all, they're crazy. And tell, you know, tell people coming in, you know, don't reroute continuously. Well, so they go to car routes. And uh, 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 I forgot what else I said. But it wasn't nothing like, like cursing or nothing. I just was like, hey. You're a rookie. You only got like 10, min uh, 10 months in the game. And you're still learning, you know. And and as I said before, you know, shit happens, and 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 companies know this, you know. I mean, if they couldn't uh, couldn't give you a definitive reason, you're a new driver, you know. Things happen, and I mean, and being that the, the company that you that you work for is a starter company, you know. Maybe they probably just added up all the stuff that happened to you. The 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 wreck with the guardrail, the wreck with the car uh the state trooper car, the the three citations that you got. You know, maybe they they, they kinda like correlated all that into their reasoning of letting you go. But again, like I said, uh you know, you you're a new driver, and and stuff like that happens. I I would imagine that they will still give you an opportunity to at least clear up the citations before they came back with with a termination decision. So, with, you got a lawyer involved now to fight the citations that you got. Um. Yes, sir. So. Um, basically how I came into these lawyers was whenever said company, um, had their insurance person call me cause they had insurances, but the insurances was given out over the phone. 
one of the insurances that they gave out was for like a paralegal. So like somebody to represent you just in case, um, you know, you get into an accident or something like that, you know, you have somebody to represent you, uh, um, you know, because it's better to go in there with some lawyers that have been doing this for a while rather than you just going in there on your own merit. They could defend you, you know, better than you can, you know? So, um, that was one of the insurances that I had took on, you know, I was paying, I forgot how much a week, but I was paying that as well as other insurances. So whenever the time came, Oh yeah. So whenever the time came and, uh, um, if you want me to let y'all know about the lawyers by name, I can't, if not, it's understandable. Like not, not, not their names, but like the, the name of the lawyers that are representing me. I, 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 I think I got an idea of who they are. Either legal, it's either uh legal shield or, uh, another one. I can't think of the name, but yeah, you can say the name if you want. I mean, you know, because, a lot okay. of new, a, a um, lot of new drivers, a lot of new drivers are not privy to this kind of information. You know, they just they just get in there, go through the orientation, and they just get into a seat, and then okay. something happens, and they're not sure what their you know legal options are because nobody never mentioned the fact that they may need legal protection. Oh, okay, yes, sir. I'll be happy to help. Um. The guys that I'm working with right now, their names are Drivers Legal Plan. Um, that's just you know drivers, and they help out. You know they help out truckers. You know whenever in situations like this, um, their insurance is only like thirteen. It's like thirteen something a month if you're just by yourself. If you go to a company, it's cheaper, but just representing them by themselves or like by yourself as like a separate entity and you just need a set of lawyers. All you got to do is pay them 13 something a month. And whenever it comes time, if you're using them and you've been paying them insurance, it's $250 a case versus if you just call them on the strand of, Hey, I just got your number. I had not been using y'all's insurance. They charge $750 a case. So, you know, it was great that I had the insurance at the time. Yeah, it is awesome. Uh, and so the three tickets, the three tickets, uh, one of them was a failure, uh, failure. The other one was uh, property damage. And, and the other one was uh, move from move from lane unsafe. If if those are the three. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, did, did y'all want the number for the driver's legal plan as well? Uh, yeah, you yeah you can go ahead and text me that, and I'll put it in the um I'll put it in the description. Okay. Um. All okay. right. All right. So, especially those three, you 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 felt that those tickets wasn't warranted, uh, because you you felt in your heart of hearts that you was doing the right thing uh the property damage they might get you you know they might get you for the property damage but you know the 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 other two you know you probably might be able to win it because you 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 pretty much was going down to where the where the cops was at but i guess the way they look at it is that since you already you know crashed the guardrail they they just felt that since you left that scene of the guardrail that's that's what they're going to get you on all right um so you reached out to me you 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 have a question about getting with another company uh the other so, company is uh so, is is bar none and you you wanted to know if you're able to you know jump on with bar none up under the circumstances uh Okay, so for me to pretty much get an idea of of what's going on, you got to know what's on your DAC report. Um, usually they'll put information like that on your DAC report. It will be about a month, maybe 30 days before it reaches your DAC report. Bar None is a company that do, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, 
but they are a company that do look at your DAC report, but they're also a company that kind of like talks to other company. It's it's like another it's like another network of conversation behind the scenes. What I will suggest, and this is what I always suggest, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't work. But what I will suggest, if you go and fill out for another company, just fill out the application. Um, when it comes to when they ask you, do they want you to, I mean, do they, do they, if you want to, have them call the last company. Check no. You you don't want them to call the last company. Of course, they're going to ask you what was the reason for leaving. I would just simply say that you know I don't don't let them know if it was for any safety reasons. Because if you let them know if it was a safety reason, then yeah, they're gonna they're gonna turn you down right off the rip. But if you just simply say, you know, you just left the company because you want something else better or something else, uh, you and the fleet manager didn't get along with each other or whatever the case, and just have them find out what happened, then that will probably work in your favor. Because when they find out, then they can come back and ask you and you can pretty much uh explain spin it. yeah 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 spin it in your favor pretty much okay uh so that's um that's what i would suggest because again um as, you know as far as your dac report goes like i said uh it usually takes about 30 days from the time the company send it over to higher right and higher right sets everything up usually it takes about 30 days i would suggest you go to higherright.com and request a copy of your DAC report to see exactly what they put on there um now as far as the as far as the ticket goes uh you did good with that you got a lawyer to uh to work on your tickets Hopefully they will be able to, you know, work it down because being that you already got, you know, you got three tickets, uh, two of which, you know, probably might be point related and probably might have, a, you know, you might have an issue with, uh, you know, with another company that's using your MVR as a, you know, for record for you to come on. Again, you could spin that in your direction too. You could let them know that you got a lawyer. It's in the courts. It's uh, you know, my lawyer is working on getting my uh my situations taken care of. Yada yada yada. Um so yeah, I mean that 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 would be my you know, that would be my oh, suggestion oh, for you going oh. forward. Oh, also, uh, 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 in terms of the citations, right? I had uh, talked with my lawyers. Not, I forgot to say this too, and they said that until, like, so, because I said it was not guilty, until something had came back that said that I was guilty, it, uh, the citations might not show up. The accident will, but the citations won't show up until like a guilty has been reached. And they said that, um. They said that due to uh, like New York having like a whole bunch of cases and being swamped, it may be a while before they even get to my cases. The accident will show up if the company puts it on the DAC report, and it may show up on your on your MVR. But you are right, you know you 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 said not guilty, and right now it's in, it's it's just going through the court system, and you just have to wait. So that's another, like I said, that's another spin that you can use on your behalf when looking for another company. You know, you could say right now my situation is in the courts. I haven't been found guilty uh, is where, you know, my lawyer is handling, you know, all of that. So 
you know, a lot of this, you know, is to be spin in your in your favor. But as far as filling out for an application, uh, you know, uh, filling filling another application out for, you know, for you. You okay? Doesn't really hurt anymore. I like I said all together uh just just uh when you fill out for the next application to the next company that you go to whether it's bar none or anybody in that in you know anybody else just uh when it when it comes to the part that says if you want us to call your you know call the last company you were for just just check no and uh and let the chips fall where they may and also get your, you know, go to hirerite.com and request a copy of your uh, DAC report. And I would say wait uh, wait until the end of the month. That will probably be 30 days and, you know, it'll show up then. And then you'll see exactly what said company put on your DAC report. Okay. All thank right. you so much, boss man. I had written everything down. All man, right. Thank you for your help. Hey, I appreciate it, Nicholas. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you uh, coming on and chopping it up with me, man. And uh, much success in your uh, future endeavors, yo. Yes, sir. Big G's got it locked.